armies of darkness approach and the end of days is near. As a valiant warrior, you must rise against the forces of evil in 99 Nights 2, the second installment in Konami's Hack and Slash series. The sequel retains the same blend of action combat with light RPG elements, but has time made this blade dull. <laughs> the Kingdom of Orphea has come under siege by the evil Lord of the Night, a mythical being summoned into the world by the powerful Dawn Witch. As the land is slowly overrun, Princess Cephia calls forth gallant warriors to aid her in this time of peril. A band of unlikely heroes is formed, each fighting to thwart the destruction of Orphea for their own reasons. You'll get to hop back and forth between each character's storyline, sometimes crossing paths with others' plots. That's the Dawn Witch, my friend. The Dawn Witch. The woman who brought the Lord of the Night into this world. The problem is the narrative impact is lost due to the fractured nature of the single-player campaign. Completing any one arc feels empty. You need to play through everyone's campaign to get the full story. That would be fine if it wasn't so difficult and boring. The mediocre plot just isn't worth the time and effort required to trudge through the game with each character. <laughs> Hurts, doesn't it? Ninety Nine Nights 2 is broken down into a single player campaign in an online co op mode. The campaign consists of several missions spread out across five different characters. You'll start off with the hero Galen, and as you progress, you'll unlock new allies. Each character's campaign consists of mostly unique levels, but there are a few overlapping missions. Levels are typically comprised of long corridors and are very linear, but there's an occasional fork in the road. <laughs> The basic objective of each mission is to wipe out the enemy and reach the end of the map. You're not up against one million troops as promised, but there are insane amounts of enemies on screen at times that come at you in endless waves. The pathetic AI ultimately keeps it from being more than a mindless trudge. Enemies will rush at you, but then they sit around waiting like statues. Then there are times when they become too aggressive to the point of absurdity. The problem is the challenge fluctuates too drastically, and the game never strikes a reasonable balance. Aside from the single-player campaign, there's an online-only multiplayer component that pits you and another player in various competitive and cooperative modes. The package is limited to a series of challenge-style maps, which are even more tedious and dull than those found in the campaign. There's nothing to do but fight enemies with little variety, and it gets boring fast. What's worse is that any character progression achieved in multiplayer is kept separate from the single-player campaign. <laughs> Though 99 Nights 2 is a very challenging game, most of the difficulty stems from the unrelenting AI and overwhelming numbers. The controls are the other part of the equation. Carving a path through waves of soldiers is accomplished by simply mashing away on the same few buttons. It's a simple system that's easy to pick up and get into, but there's no depth to the basic melee combat. And though each character plays slightly different, there's no learning curve. There are only a handful of instances during which you can't get away with button mashing. In addition to your two basic melee attacks, you can equip up to four accessories that give you secondary skills that work on a cooldown system. They're handy in a tough spot, but many of the more useful ones are tucked away until the later missions. If you're interrupted while trying to use one, not only will the spell sometimes fail, but you'll have to wait for it to recharge again. Each character also possesses a special ability that's unique to them, but they're primarily used to clear obstacles. The real equalizer is the Orb Gauge, which fills up as you slay enemies or by grabbing blue jars. It's broken into three sections, and you can tap into it to unleash powerful special attacks, the power and duration of which depends on how many bars are filled. Using it can turn the tide of a fight, and while you're obliterating foes, you're granted temporary immunity to damage as well. You have defensive maneuvers as well, but only one comes in handy. Sure, you can block, but you're still vulnerable in your blind spots, and some attacks break through your guard anyway. Dodge rolling, on the other hand, is a necessity, and a well-timed roll can evade even the most devastating attacks. But sometimes, even dodging doesn't help. Enemies can launch you into the air and continue to juggle your character while you're helpless. It's not just annoying, it flat-out ruins the experience when it gets out of hand. Shh. 
Show some respect. This is Princess Sephia, the ruler of all Orphea. Repetitive corridors and some really ugly textures pervade every corner in the Kingdom of Orphea. You can count the enemy models on one hand, and the occasional recolor is a poor attempt to disguise this. Character models aren't necessarily ugly, but they are generic. Environments look flat, with most of the diverse terrain off-limits in the background. Some of the voice work shows emotion, but it's a wasted effort on such a lackluster game, and the soundtrack is weak and reserved. 99 Nights 2 is one of the most difficult games available, but the real challenge is putting up with this mess. Boring missions coupled with tedious combat isn't a recipe for fun. Stay away, unless you're a glutton for punishment. What a hideous soul I have. 